Well, glory. It's a good day to be alive today, and we welcome you to Supernatural Tuesday today. I've got Brother Brian Gillenwater with me here, and I'm Brother Philip Maddox, and we're sitting in today for Bishop Shane Calhoun, who uh, should be flying back from the Dominican Republic today, yeah. either today or late tonight, and Wow, what a victorious trip he's had over there, Brother Brian. I got to talk to him Sunday for a little bit uh, through message, and there's been many souls saved, uh, demons cast out, uh, just stories and stories of salvation, and what a work feeding the people. And we just appreciate a pastor that puts feet on the ground, yeah. works by faith, and that's Amen. what we're going to talk about Amen. today, but before we get into uh, the meat of the program, we want to welcome uh, some people who have tuned in today. Uh, good morning, Michelle Cross, to you. Uh, good morning, Melissa Weaver. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, Jory Couch is watching with us, Joel Cross. Uh, we uh, also have Donnie Higdon. Good morning to you, Donnie Higdon, and Debbie Moore is watching. Uh, Mercy. All the way from Uganda, we're getting yeah. ready to go to Africa probably towards the end of May. Uh, that is still uh, subject to, uh, uh, to approval, but we're looking forward to going over there and inducting some churches uh, into uh, the ministry. Uh, we have Candace Lori on with us this morning, but we want to get right into the broadcast. Hallelujah. And uh, we want to uh, just welcome you today, and uh, I'm going to say a quick prayer. Uh, Father, I thank you for today. God, I thank you that we have this opportunity, Lord, to come before your saints, Lord. And Lord, I just already, Lord, feel those that, Lord, have burdens, Lord, and, and, and need healing in their body, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that your mighty hand go from this studio, Lord, for you and an omnipresent God, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for the stripes that you bore. God, I'm asking for your hand upon Brother Brian and myself, Lord, that, Lord, you would just anoint us. God, there's not one thing, Lord, that Brian and Philip have to say that can help anybody, Lord, but your spirit working through us, Lord. And I thank you for this spirit that I feel already. God, just empty us out and use us as your vessel for this appointed time. And Father, we just give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And I went to uh, Brother Brian about three days ago, and, and he said the Lord had directed him that he the Lord was going to drop a topic in my spirit. And he did, and it was on faith, Brother Brian. And, you know, I'm just a musician. I'm just an old Southern Gospel Quartet. A uh, guy that had some some great family members, uh, Warren and Wayne Sipe, that took me out when I was just a, a little boy, just just playing the drums. But, you know, it got me to thinking, Brother Brian, about growing up, and I'm a pew baby, I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit it, but that old song, Living by Faith, yeah, I and that. I just want to get into this just for a moment, Brother Brian, and talk about the gentleman that wrote this song, and there was... A couple of co-authors, but yeah. but the main one that wrote verse four was Ari Winsett. And uh, if I pronounced his name wrong, please forgive me. But he was just a local boy, yeah. born in Bledsoe County, Tennessee. He died in Dayton, Tennessee. Moved off for a little bit. But brother Brian, I was doing a little research this morning. The Lord woke me up at three thirty this morning, getting ready for this broadcast. And being a musician, he knows I love to research songwriters and. Listen, he got married in 1908 and had five kids. Now, brother, I've had, got two kids. They're already gone. i got grandkids. But one thing I know for sure, if you have kids, you will have to live by faith. Amen. And during that time, his wife died, Brother Brian. And can you imagine being a, a widower with five kids? And so... These old hymns that were written, there was substance behind them. Now, I'm not coming against anything that's written today. I, I'm a contemporary Christian uh, lover, and I love uh, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman. I'm not endorsing anybody, but he's just an old Paducah, Kentucky boy, but I love his songs. But anyway, he got remarried, moved back to 
uh, the Chattanooga area started a publishing company. And one, sever, one of Dove Award uh, was inducted into the Southern Gospel Museum and Hall of Fame. But this song, Living by Faith, I just want to read the verses on yeah. this. And it says, I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Verse 2 goes on to say, I know that he'll safely carry me through no matter what evil's betide. Why should I then care, Brother Brian, though the tempest may blow? And I looked up that word tempest, and that means a storm. We're going to have storms. Listen, there's storms all around us right now. But we put our faith in Jesus Christ. He walks close to my side. Verse 3 goes on, and it says, Our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be o'er. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Now this is the verse Brother Winsett wrote. Our Lord will return for his loved one someday. Our troubles will then all be o'er. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. That is the verse that I just read. But I love this chorus. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm safe in his sheltering arms. I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. And can I tell you... That sometimes just I, I, I'm human and, and, and things alarm me, Brother Brian, but I have to go back to that word faith. And, you know, the Bible goes on to say <clears throat> it's impossible to please God without faith. And I'm honored to be here with you today. And I'm looking forward to what you have to share. So I'm going to turn it over to you now, Brother Brian. Thank you, Brother. It's good to be here this morning. And. You know, as always, every Supernatural Tuesday, it's your day to see supernatural things take place in your life. This word that we share that you apply to your life and then you take it and you run with it and things happen, things transpire and we want to hear your testimonies as well. When God does touch you through it, we want you to send your testimonies in on the comments as well and I hate Brother Vernon's <laughs> Not able to be with us, uh, Vernon Van Deventer, but uh, we need to keep him in prayer. But yes, I'm sure he would have a lot to say on this subject about faith. I was raised in a Pentecostal family. Back years ago, my dad, I seen him walk by faith. There's times when, yeah, he had uh, four of us brats. <laughs> so yes, he had to walk by faith. There's times we went out and we picked up milk bottles or, uh, excuse me, uh, Coke bottles to take them and turn them in. Some of you younger ones don't know what I'm talking about, but we used to gather up Coke bottles that people would sling on the side of the road, and we'd take them and turn them back in for, I think they were a nickel. And we'd go gather up Coke bottles just to buy milk. But God supernaturally took control of our finances. I heard my mom and dad praying around the altar and I heard their prayers about finances and all of this. But then a word came to them that God's going to lay the money in your hands. And from that day forward, it was just a few days, we got a check in the mail from a bank that made a mistake in our favor in St. Albans, West Virginia, back in the 60s. Here we had moved to Okinawa, we had moved to Illinois, we had moved back to West Virginia. We, moved, we traveled around the world as missionaries and they found us here in Cleveland, Tennessee with a check for a thousand and something dollars. But that money didn't last long, paying bills and things. But then God turned around and blessed my dad with a job making quite a bit of money. As a missionary, we never did go without. But it was a walk by faith. And I looked up the difference between faith and belief. Did you know there's no difference in faith and believe if you look up belief it says an acceptance that a statement is true or something exists trust faith or confidence in someone or something 
Here's the difference. In saying you believe, saying you have faith, and actually putting it to the test. You're out hunting or walking through the woods and you run across an old rickety swinging bridge and some of the boards are missing and you step on one and it's rotten and it starts falling through and you back up and you're sitting there looking at that bridge and all of a sudden <laughs> someone behind you says, do you believe you can go all the way across this bridge? Do you believe it'll hold us? Do you believe that we can make it to the other side? It's one thing to be standing on solid ground and saying, yes, we can do it. But it's another thing to be able to take a step and step forward and keep on going. There's the difference in applying it to your life or just saying it. Every morning when we wake up, every morning when you wake up and you turn over and you look at the wall and God has not written on the wall what you're supposed to do for that day. He hasn't written up there what we're to do and the things we're going to accomplish and the things we're going to run into. If we don't see that on our wall, when we swing our feet out of that bed, we better fall to our knees and pray because it's a walk by faith. Oh, it would be wonderful if God would write it down what we are to do that day, but it's a walk by faith. Each morning we pray, we seek God. I'm going to read uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man who is among you, not to thank himself more highly than he ought to thank, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. <laughs> He said, every man has received the measure of faith. You know, there's times we doubt. There's times we wonder. And, you know, we haven't seen something in a while from God. And we start thinking, well, you know, what's going on? But we have to continue by faith. You know, there's some preachers that think they're high and mighty. That they think they're, uh, I don't know, that... They're getting ready to walk on water. And it puts the person in the back pew back there that's listening to them. It puts them in a position like, oh, I wish I could do like him. I wish I could be like him. Oh, I wish I could do this. Guess what? <laughs> like I say, today's your day. Because God said in his word that he's given you that measure of faith. The same as those that think that they're high and mighty. And it says you're not supposed to think you're high and mighty. Don't think you're greater than somebody else because God has... Oh, I love this, brother. Because God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for Brian, he'll do for you. What he's done for Philip, he'll do for me. You know, what he's done for Ed up in the sound booth, he'll do for you as well. We glorify God, we magnify him, we praise him because, you know, this walk by faith is so amazing. I'm going to let Philip share some of his scriptures before I go too far because I just want to quote scripture after scripture on faith, brother. But, you know, God is an amazing God. He's, he's here for you, and he's given you that measure of faith to make it through this day, to make it through tomorrow, to make it through the next day. And there's times when things happen around us, and we don't know what's going to happen to us. You know, if our loved one has died, the supplier of the family, the one that brought in the bread and the milk and put it in the fridge, and now they're no longer there, and we wonder how we're going to make it. <laughs> we can go to the story of Ruth. We can go to the story of uh, Esther, and we can see the working of God that when you think all hope is lost, then God leads you to that field to glean in. And you're in that field and you think, oh, I'm just picking up and I'm working and I'm slaving. <laughs> then the next thing you know, you own the field. You become the owner of the field. 
That's the God we're talking about. That's the God that if you walk by faith, he's right here with us. He's, he's right here beside of us. And it's a walk by faith, but it's an amazing journey. Brother Philip, go ahead, brother. <laughs> well, as you were speaking about your dad and <clears throat> the testimony there, Brother Brian, back last November, and many may not know, um, I came out of driving a truck. And there's for those that don't know, truck drivers make pretty good money. Yes. And I just got to thinking about, Brother Brian, how the Lord provides is what you said. When you, the word came to my mind, obey. Yes. And last November, I lost income. And we are now in the beginning of March. And I got into a discussion with my wife. We have been feeling the tug of going into full-time ministry over the last year. Um, and are just so thankful for that opportunity. But there's only so many hours in the day, yeah. Brother Brian. And you know what I'm talking about. You've been an evangelist, a pastor. And so my wife and I got to talking about the discussion, stepping out on faith. And, you know, I made this comment to her, and I'm so glad to have a wife. And she's probably watching today. Kathy is her name. And I asked her, I said, baby, when does stepping out on faith involve risk? Because as a man, as a provider of the home, which we're supposed to do, yeah. there's risk involved. And yeah. she got really quiet on me, Brother Brian. And I feel the Holy Spirit in this tabernacle today. And she said, where God is involved, yeah. there is no risk. Yeah. And I thank you for a wife, Lord, that supports me. But as you were talking, obedience came yeah. to mind, Brother Brian. And, you know... I think often when I think of faith, I think of Abraham, yeah. the father of the faith. And yeah. what kind of faith it must have took to take your own son and lay him on an altar, yeah. getting ready to kill him. Yeah. And at the last second, the Lord gave him other instruction and provided yeah. a sacrifice. And yeah. that, brother, is putting faith to the test yeah. and works and you know I'm so thankful for a great Bible teacher in, in my life um, brother Isaac Walker and he made this comment at the men's meeting we had last Saturday and I've really pondered on this that you know you can call yourself a Christian and I feel yeah. the Holy Spirit now you can call yourself a Christian but are you a follower exactly. of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ see that Hallelujah. takes faith Hallelujah. words are cheap Words are cheap, but faith yeah. costs you something. It's a sacrifice. And I'm glad that you led into Romans because I'm going to go into Romans 4 and 16. Therefore, the promise, and that promise the Lord reminded me is John 3, 16. An elementary verse of scripture for God so loved the world yeah. that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever... Yes. Believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And as Brother Brian was teaching you earlier, this faith, this everlasting life is just not for me. It's just not for Brother Brian. Listen, we're nothing special. And, and Brother Brian and I are very close. And, and can I tell you, we're just friends. And, and I know his weaknesses. He knows mine. But I know when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of this man and the Lord pours revelation into him and that's what he's doing today. We are nothing special. But I got to thinking, Brother Brian, about the promises of God involved in faith. And there are many. In 2 Peter 3 and 9, and I love this verse, the Lord does not delay his promises. They are not delayed as some understand delay. But it is patient with you yes. not wanting any to perish but all to come to repentance and can I say and I'm going to repeat this verse again because I feel the hand of the Lord upon me faith without works yes. is dead and it is impossible yes. to please the Lord without faith you know yes. I, I want to bring up Bishop Shane Calhoun he's been in the Dominican Republic all week and you know it takes a step of faith to leave your family, Brother yeah. Brian, and everything behind. And listen to me. 
Even though the Dominican is not a dangerous country, we're not promised tomorrow. That's it. And he did not know what was going to happen to him. He didn't know yeah. if he was returning, but he was willing to pay the ultimate Amen. price, Brother Brian. And to me, I'm thankful for the role models that they obey the Lord. And to me, that is living by exactly. faith. And I'll turn it back over to you. Exactly. And that's why I brought up some of the older patriarchs, some of the ones in the Old Testament. I talked about uh, Ruth, but, you know, I'd mentioned Esther. It was by faith that she stepped out. It was by faith that she had to go before the king, not knowing if her life was going to be taken or if it was going to be spared. But it's a walk by faith. And it's for such a time as this that God has given you faith, that God has given you that measure to be able to step forward and go before uh, great and mighty men to be able to do those things that God's called you to be. The man that brought his son to Jesus in the New Testament, he said that uh, I've taken him to your disciples and they couldn't do anything for him because if you remember, Jesus had given his disciples power over the demons and to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to... Uh, opened the eyes of the blind, just gave them power to do the miracles and the healings. And here it is a couple chapters later that this man's bringing his son to Jesus. And he said, I took him to your disciples, but they couldn't do anything for him. Jesus said, <laughs> do you believe I can do this? I love this man's response. Because he said, I was over here at this church, <laughs> and I didn't see anything happen. I was over here at this church, and I didn't see anything happen. And I'm asking you, because my faith is weak, to help my unbelief. <laughs> and Jesus took care of that miracle. So this morning, if your faith is weak, this morning, if you're... That measure of faith that God has given everybody. If that measure is just a little weak because you've been in this prayer line. You've been over there in that prayer line. You've been back here in this service and that service. And you've traveled many miles to services because you need a touch from God. <laughs> and you didn't see anything. All you have to do is right there at your workspace or at home or in your vehicle. Pull over on the side of the road, you drivers of the trucks. And cry out to God. And if you need that extra help of unbelief, <laughs> like this man did, he said, help my unbelief. The things I've never seen before, God, you can do it. This is the belief. This is what it takes because God has given it to you. And God is still not going to let you flounder and flail out here. But he's going to help that unbelief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Brother Brian, because, Hallelujah. you know, there's nothing wrong with going to the Lord and telling him your insecurities. Look, all he wants Hallelujah. is intimacy with you. All this stuff we do, Hallelujah. Brother Brian, ministry and feeding the poor and going Hallelujah. on mission trips. And, and I'm a drummer, at, you know, at this church and, and you're a preacher. Go out and evangelize. You know, that's good stuff. And it's God's stuff. But at the end of the day, all he wants is intimacy. That's, That's all he Amen. wants. Amen. And, you know, Brother Brian, I'm, I'm just sitting here just <laughs> obeying the Lord. And, you know, I, 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 I feel again someone in my spirit saying, but, yeah. Brother Phil, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've done. Oh, Let me tell you something. Paul was a murderer. David was an adulteress, and there's nothing you have done, my friend, that God cannot forgive, and Hallelujah. that's not my words, that's not Brother Brian's that's words, that's Amen. not Bishop Calhoun's words, Hallelujah. that is the word of the Lord, yes. and if you will just turn it all over to him today and confess Hallelujah. your sins, that's why we're here, to minister to the saints and I just want to encourage you today, if this broadcast has touched yes. you, Amen. message in and let us know. And I just want real quickly, uh, Brother Brian, we're about to close out.
I want to recognize some uh, uh, that are online with us. Uh, Betty Kersey, thank you for watching with us today, okay? Um, De Denise Wilson is watching, and we appreciate that. Uh, Amy Gillenwater, Brother yeah. Brian's wife, is watching. Um, our uh, senior pastor, Isaac Walker, uh, is watching. We pray blessings over you, man of God. Jory Couch is watching. Tom Roberts, good morning to you, Brother Tom. And he's a Hello. elder of this church. Denise Wilson wants us to pray yeah. uh, for her daughter, Victoria. Uh, Chuck yeah. Bryant, the pastor over our television ministry here, uh, is watching. And uh, Jory Couch has some spoken requests. Jacob Curtis one of our youth here uh, is watching. We just love our youth here. Yeah. And I love the investment um, that Dr. Walker and Dr. Calhoun yeah. is making in, uh, in them in this church. But Brother Brian, I feel the Lord just wanting you to close us out in prayer. And uh, then we'll come back and make a few announcements. Uh, but just pray for those that are struggling with this faith that we're talking about today, Brother Brian. And I'll turn it back over to you. Hallelujah. You know, like I say, today's the day that God will touch you. Today's the day that God will turn your situation around. And that measure of faith that he has given you, all you have to do is say, God, help my unbelief. And let him touch you. Let him anoint you. Let him change that situation. And, you know, we have so many that have prayer requests. And if you have a prayer request, please send it in. Because we'll be checking this from time to time and we'll take it to the Lord in prayer. But God is faithful. <laughs> God is faithful to answer. So as we go before the Lord in prayer right now, just know that he's helping that unbelief. Father God, we glorify you. We praise you. We magnify you. God, Denise's daughter, Lord, you know the need. You know, Father. What needs to be done? God, each request that we've received, Father, you know the urgency of the need. You know, God, what needs to be healed and touched. God, there's things that we have come to you with, God, that there's nothing too hard for you to do. There's not anything, God, that you won't do for your people. God, we glorify you. We praise you. If it's finances, if it's broken bones or illness or God, just blindness or anything, there's not anything you will not do for your people. God, we thank you for the measure of faith you've given us. We thank you, God, for that opportunity to be able to come before the throne boldly, to be able to present it to you and to say, God, we've been over here or we've been over there, and God, we haven't seen it, but God, help our unbelief. God, we magnify you. We praise you this morning because of your word that's going forth, that's doing the healing, that's doing the miracles, that God that is just opening the blinded eyes, unstopping deaf ears, raising those, God, that have never walked. God, we magnify you and praise you for your word because there is no stopping your word, but it will accomplish what you have spoken and said it to do. God, we ask that you just touch each and every one, God, that you magnify and just, God, just open up doors that we didn't even know were there. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Hallelujah. I love that prayer you prayed. God's word will not go out null and void, but it will accomplish exactly. what it was sent out yeah. to do. And we thank you for tuning in today to this Supernatural Tuesday. As Brother Brian said, Hallelujah. today is your day. Hey, listen, if you don't have a home church, I welcome you to come out and visit, visit with us at Family Worship Center. We're at 4271 Dalton Pike next to the Armory. Uh, we're right uh, in the heart of Cleveland, Tennessee, and our services are Wednesday night at 7, Sunday at 10.30. We feed you a free breakfast starting at 9, Sunday school at 9.45. Hey, listen, we've got classes for all ages. Brother Brian, we've got a, a, a young lady... Uh, Sister Anna that has taken over the nursery here. Yeah. I feel God's hand on her. And this nursery, we're going to have, I believe, toddlers speaking in tongues in that class. I really believe that in my spirit. And just limitless youth, Omega kids, listen, plug in to your local church. That's where it's all happening. And we thank you for tuning in. Send us in those prayer requests. And we will continue to pray throughout the day. And remember, today is your day. It is Supernatural Tuesday. Thank you and God bless you.